everybody. A father's sweet short story written for his newly adopted children more than two decades ago is now a full length animated musical film that's about to hit theaters. Ice Dragon Legend of the Blue Daisies features a young girl and boy in a race to save their land from evil with help from her grandfather. There's one problem though, none of the villagers believe them. That's happened to me so many times. Here with more <laughs> of this story, please welcome filmmaker Bruce Stacy. It's great to have you here. Great to be here, Mary. Uh, the whole thing, the, the making of the movie, the, the place it came from is also amazing, but let's start with your inspiration for the story with your kids. Well, we have to go back 25 years for that. Yep. Uh, back in 1990, my wife Elaine and I were part of a humanitarian trip to Russia, which was then Leningrad becoming St. Petersburg to help the 10,000 orphans in the city. Right. So I was there uh, working and, um, and, and while there, uh, and I was working with the Leningrad Symphony on a musical I composed that was presented at the Oktoberski Palace and all the proceeds went to help the kids. Amazing. Um, while I was doing that, my wife Elaine was touring the orphanages and she met a little girl, was the first little girl at a sick orphanage, took her hand. And that little girl soon became our adopted daughter, a year later, mm -hmm. Elena. So um, when I returned to Russia, uh, Elaine always likes to say she delivered our first two naturally born <laughs> kids. I delivered the last one. I went back to Russia uh, to, um, to bring Elena home. And while I was there, I was trying to unpack uh, kind of the world situation for my other two kids. Um, you know, we're going to bring back this little Russian girl. She's going to become your, your sister. sister. And I'm going to share a room with her. And, um, and it was a very interesting time, of course, because perestroika was happening. The right. walls were coming down across Eastern Europe. We had what this, was this new all sense about? of openness and promise. So I have this image of me sitting very much like I am on, in a borrowed flat in Russia, uh, working to adopt my daughter. And I started to uh, write a story. Originally, I called it Blue Daisies in the Summer of Winter to explain this to my kids. And it was really a story about a, a gentle people that lived in a mountain village and they sang a song, thankful for the earth, the sea, and the sky, and the blue daisies that bloomed in the hills. Mm -hmm. That the blue daisies were a sign and a promise that all was well. And then a storm came, a bitter storm arrived, but the people still sang the song because uh, they knew it would be over soon, but the storm stayed through the winter, through the spring, and into the summer, and the people lost hope, and they forgot the song. And so uh, when things were at their worst, and they were freezing in their homes, they were held in their homes by bars of ice that locked them there. A small child said, I can get firewood, I can help us, and he slipped out before anyone could stop him through the bars of ice and ran out into the storm. And the people despaired, thinking, now we've lost the child, all is lost. But then they heard a sound in the, in the midst of the storm, they heard this still, small voice of the child singing the song. And the song was thankful for the earth, the sea, and the sky, and the blue daisies. And one by one, the people remembered the song, and their voices formed a chorus of hope, and the, the, the song defeated the storm. So that simple That's story... That's beautiful. Uh, that is you. really beautiful. Yeah. So I shared that with my kids, and I said, well, communism was like a storm that swept through that land. And now the storm is swept away by new hope for new beginnings and freedom mm -hmm. across Europe. And, and that was the story I shared. It sat in my drawer for 25 years until about five years ago, I was encouraged by an East Coast animation company who I'd worked with and said, do you have anything else? We love working with you. We love your storytelling. And I said, well, I do have this, this old story that Got I thought might be... Got this thing in my drawer yeah. that we can talk so, about. <laughs> uh, so I pulled it out and shared it with them and they said we must do something with this. That began a three-year production journey. Uh, we didn't know what we had when we finished it because we weren't working with a, a budget like Frozen or a major motion picture, but it's, but it's beautiful. And um, we finished it and uh, we shared this with some folks in the theater chains and in Canada it began. Mm -hmm. Really with Cineplex they said this is wonderful, we're going to take it across the country and share it with families. We're seeing a little bit of the trailer. It's beautiful and it's I think it's something we need right now. It is such a, a magnificent bit of hope. Um, the song from the movie has some real significance. Tell me about its history. Ah, well, um, of course, it's the song that defeats the dragon. You'll have right. to you'll have to see the whole movie. So it's it's interesting because I, I think the metaphor there is that you know the root of hopelessness and despair sometimes cannot be solved with the physical thing. It's a thing of the heart, mm -hmm. and uh, you know the darkness begins in the heart, right. and and um, and light begins in the heart. So um, the song defeats the dragon. So music is very important to this, and of course, it's entertaining. Uh -huh. 
it's, it's uh, educational in a way, and it's a parable, really. And a parable is simply an engaging story that when you start to unpack it, there's a greater hidden truth and meaning. So this is a wonderful film for families to take. They'll be entertained, they'll be right. tapping their feet and singing the songs, but there's also something to talk about when you, when you get home. Absolutely. Now, did I understand correctly that the song itself was played for Gorbachev and Reagan during uh, the time that they it, were it, having uh, these negotiations that opened well, the Well, not that particular up? song, but in 1986, it's a bit of a side story which links me to Russia. I wrote a song for the United Nations in 1986, uh, which was the International Year of Peace. And just down the street from Seattle here is, of course, Vancouver. Mm -hmm. The World Exhibition was there, and it was used at the closing ceremony of the World Exhibition in 86. And that morning, the Commissioner General announced that that song and a music video produced of the song with all the participants, 80 uh, uh, members from 50 countries around the world formed the choir that sang that song, was played for President Reagan and Secretary Gorbachev at the Iceland summit. And of course, that oh. summit resulted in, you know, the largest, uh, they talked about nuclear disarmament, and there was, it was a wonderful outcome. Huge from reduction that Iceland of nukes. Summit, from, reduction from of nukes. I remember so, that in Reykjavik, and what a big deal that was at the time. You know, we could use a little more of that right now. Yeah, so we sure I, could, I think we? we need you back at the, at the composing <laughs> board really quickly, whip out a few things. Where did this come from, from you, though, to begin with? I mean, you've been at this kind of work, the work of the spirit, the work of peace for decades, what started that for you? Well, I, you know, I had a praying grandfather who, who, who loved me and encouraged me in the arts and music against all odds, you know. Um, <laughs> your parents will tell you, you know, get a, get a good job, learn a trade. But I had this artistic bent and I went to live with my grandparents in my early years. They really encouraged me to follow your heart. And, and that's what I've been doing ever since. I, I love children. I have four children of my own. I have seven grandchildren now. Congratulations. And of course, How uh, fun is that? And my daughter, Elena, has, has a daughter now. That's like a Cinderella story for me, right. bringing her back from Russia. Um, uh, such an unlikely outcome for her. Uh, the prognosis for her when we adopted her, when I arrived in Russia, um, was very poor. Um, her health was very poor. She, she was found on a street at a year and a half. She was abandoned and then brought mm. to the orphanage. She didn't speak until she was four. Oh my gosh. And so the prognosis we had when we adopted her was um, that, oh, yeah, and there she is. There, uh, there's your family. There's the, there's the family. That's, that's part of my, Elena's not in that photo actually. Is that's she my, doing well? That's my oldest daughter. She's doing wonderful. There she is there on the right oh holding her daughter with the little tiara. Oh my gosh. So uh, Elena's prognosis when we adopted her was severely retarded. And we, we found out that because she didn't speak until she was four, she was misdiagnosed. But we didn't know it till we got her home, and just the loving nurture of a family that cared for her. I, I realized when I brought her home that first year, she never stopped talking. So, <laughs> so I thought something's got to be wrong with this yeah. prognosis. And of course, she's married an architect. She's a wonderful, wonderful mother, and we just, we just well, love her. God to bless bed, so. you. That's thank you. that is really wonderful. Thank you for thank sharing you. this. Um, Ice Dragon: Legend of the Blue Daisies opens in select theaters later this month. Please go see it. Please visit our website for a list of the theaters in Western Washington. We'll make it easy for you to find it. Still ahead, a special fundraiser this weekend to help a South Pacific island ravaged by a cyclone. We'll be back after this quick break.